it wasn't until it wasn't until that very last day when we were all singing and like everyone we all we all got to say peace and friendship both in uh, Mandarin and in English. Also learning to be compassionate to people and that um, and also that music is a universal language. That's what makes it so special that even though there was this huge language barrier between um, us and the Chinese students, we were still able to come together, which is, I think, the beauty of what this program is all about. This is a collaboration that uh, Hai Jing Fu, uh, my very good friend from the Metropolitan Opera, and I put together 10 years ago. This happens to be the 10th year of the celebration. This is very important for us and for MSU too, because uh, I know Richard for a long time. We have done uh, so many performances at uh, the Metropolitan Opera. Then uh, I think one day we, we just, uh, in the dressing room, I talked to him and said, should we just do the exchange program? And seeing how everyone was so happy and how we performed these operas in two countries, a very short time to put them together, um, meeting these people, and it, was, it wasn't until I think that very last moment that seeing how music, more specifically opera, had brought together all of us, those many of us who would have never known each other, how music brought everyone together, that was just absolutely amazing to me. Since then, the things are going very well, and for all the students who have been in this program, they approve a lot, and they have learned a lot. I think that's very important for Chinese kids and American kids. This is really the first time we've ever done a, a full production collaboration. In the past, it's always been sort of gala concerts with kind of hit tunes where the Chinese have sung okay. American songs, the Americans have sung Chinese songs, opera ensembles, same thing with the faculty. The people of the Chinese opera are also fantastic. So I'm really this one is actually going to be full-fledged uh, operatic productions and there will be uh, 13 students uh, uh, from uh, the uh, China Conservatory of Music and 13 students from Michigan State University that will do and perform the 13 roles in both productions. We wanted to have a real representation of both cultures. And so uh, the Chinese suggested The Savage Land, and we're only doing excerpts. It's actually a full-length opera. Then we had to come up with the, the American side. And I had the idea to do a review, because uh, especially the music of Leonard Bernstein, is so, it's so quintessentially American. It's always been a part of the experience here is that we've always had Chinese and American students work together and that'll be no difference in this one. I'm in the, um, the Chinese opera and I know it's just a huge undertaking but I think everybody's really excited about what we're going to put out. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to take a second to thank you for all the work that, uh, that you've done up to this point. Obviously it's really it's really impressive uh, what, you've, what you've accomplished thus far. I know we've got a lot of challenges ahead of us, but uh, I did want to thank you for the terrific effort and the work that you put in. I'm really proud of you all, and I mean that, uh, I mean that from my heart. Um, for being only my second time out of the country, I mean, it was just amazing. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a more cultural, eye-opening experience. And it kind of just like hit me like how surreal this all is. Music has really affected my life so profoundly in terms of just uh, emotionally what it brings out in you and the audience, but also the places it's been able to take me. So we're at the China Conservatory in a small classroom. This is our second day of rehearsing with 
the Chinese singers. Well, it's about details. So you'll hear Melanie Helton working with them, both vocally and also um, just staging them, uh, showing them where they're going to be on stage, what their attitude is, who they're talking to. For these students, a lot of them have not done a lot of sort of movement to music before, but I think they're going to be fine. I want you to just keep the beat with your body. It, it takes longer. That's all there is to it. And sometimes you have to go up where I could say to my students, move six feet upstage, move six inches to the left, whatever, I actually have to go up and move their bodies physically. It's hard for Chinese people because the Chinese students normally, they don't get that kind of training, dancing and singing at the same time. I think for the Chinese, it's a wonderful uh, exploration of Western opera singing and Western techniques and styles. One of the things that we do is open up a new experience to the Chinese. In fact, we have two very successful alumni of the program, one of whom is actually appearing in the show, Zach Wan Song, who also has taught all of our students their Mandarin, which has been great. It's kind of hard for them in the beginning, you know. Uh, they don't know anything about Chinese at all. And also, there is a couple uh, sound that uh, in, didn't exist in English, so they are hard to pronounce that word. For the American students, uh, the, the language is, is an incredible challenge for them. Uh, Mandarin is uh, very different from, from any of the Romance languages, which is what uh, culturally we, uh, we tend to focus on more in Western opera. That's definitely been, I think, the biggest challenge is trying to get over the language. We were kind of thrown into the deep end without all of that prior background that we get with all the other languages. For our American singers, they do Chinese opera in Chinese. That's amazing. Things are going good. <laughs> yeah, we're tired, we're jet lagged, but uh, we're doing good. Life is good. Tonight will be the first time that we've actually tried to run the Bernstein. Uh, the Bernstein sings America. Uh, we're also hearing for the first time uh, the entire group sing the one ensemble where everyone sings. So this is a this is a first. Together. When that ensemble number at the end of this piece, Melanie uh, Helton did such a, a beautiful job of, of crafting that last piece, Make Our Garden Grow, uh, represents everything uh, that Hai Jing and I sort of envisioned when we tried to get our students together and learn from each other. But now, uh, with everyone together, that's uh, both a wonderful thing and a complicating thing. <laughs> the looking group I've ever seen. I think any time that uh, you have something that's as intense as this, we have to, we have to sort of keep in mind that, that folks have only been here uh, literally for a few days. It, it seems to me that, that every year I sort of say the same thing, Hai Jing and I say the same thing when we're doing the ensemble numbers, we, we always get excited about the, the individual material and the solos, and that always seems to be easy to bring our energy to it, but the whole purpose of this whole collaboration, you know, was to bring people together. This ensemble number is everything. It's everything that this collaboration has been about. And, and if we can't find energy and we can't find commitment when we're rehearsing, then, it, then all of this doesn't really mean anything. I know that we're all tired and we're all fatigued. There isn't anybody here that isn't feeling those things. But when I see, when, when we've had four faculty people begging you to try and smile and to try and find something in your heart to say and do something, you, you have to do it. This is going to make or break everything that we're doing. So please, please, please find some way of rehearsing this. Find something in your heart that means something to you and bring it. It's really high pressure, even with jet lag. And no matter how tired you are, if you're feeling sick, you need to be coming at um, your work with enthusiasm and a, a certain level of joy. And there is an expectation with that. So. Um, 
I guess we just got what was coming. And this has been totally lethargic tonight. Okay, totally. So can we can we find can we find some humanity among each other, please? We fail a lot in this business. Uh, when something's really hard, you're going to fail more often, and so it takes a little longer to to sort of get where we need to go. And uh, sometimes they have to be reminded of that. Yeah, definitely, definitely got emotional, and that's and that's pretty common. But in this situation, it was a lot of pressure because it was time sensitive, and with all you know language barriers and cultural barriers, things like that. It did make it a very high stress situation. It does make a difference, sort of your fatigue level, uh, when you are in a completely different place, you're out of your comfort zone, uh, and then all of a sudden you're hurled into a very intense situation that frankly is hard. I mean, what we're doing is, is, is a really difficult thing. I just try to like by sheer force of, of imagination and, and demonstration as well, make them see what I see. I don't think we can give enough to the audience. So I think we just need to bring more energy on the stage when we're there and be happy and bring that passion out and let the audience feel in that. It was difficult at first, but once we actually got on stage and we're trying things out with each other um, musically and could, could kind of connect over the story, then we could bring that more into that connection that we made on stage, kind of bring it into our lives and allowing ourselves to be comfortable outside of the program. Even though um, we can't understand each other, we do have this similar um, love of music that we can communicate with each other and that's been like really beautiful. I loved singing with our Chinese friends. They're hilarious. I know it's definitely starting to happen. Um, we um, rehearsed with each other um, this afternoon and we're starting to like get to know each other and become friends. Get this, and it was like Chinese Lipton tea, and I'm like, but then I bought some. We're good? Okay. I think they all loved uh, like going out and shopping, not just for the shopping, but because the Chinese took them. And of course, because you get to bargain over there, that's a new experience for everybody. For me. The red, I really, you digging it? Having them there to haggle our prices was crucial. Um, I was with them and they were helping me barter because I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. They just go back and forth and back and forth with the, the shop owners and you can see the shop owners getting upset and no, oh, no, 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 too little, too little. And Coco, Coco is relentless. So that was crazy, but it was, it was a fun experience. It's too bad we don't do things like that in America. <laughs> We are walking the Great Wall of China. Yeah. yeah. In China. Not too shabby. Yeah, yeah in China? Yeah. <laughs> actually, we're in China. actually in China. Yeah. At yeah. the Great Wall. At the yes. Great Wall. It was definitely more of a workout than I had anticipated. <laughs> you literally have to climb. And it was nice to go also with some of our Chinese counterparts. Oh, hello. This last Hello. time was particularly amazing because the, the air was so clear. You could just see for miles and miles and miles. Actually, my favorite part was singing the alma mater on the Great Wall with all of my colleagues. sense of pride for our community here at Michigan State but I also felt it was you know we were in a different place so it was like wow this is really like a universal thing to be able to you know bring what we have at Michigan State all over the world so it was a cool experience.
Well, we're about uh, half an hour before uh, the show begins. We're just uh, taking care of a few last minute details. Make sure you walk on the almost stage center, okay. not the behind the counter, but yeah. almost there. That will take all the time. That, that, that your dialogue will bring you everything on the stage. Yeah. Then start directly from there. We don't do any dialogue. Well, I'm really excited. Yeah. I mean, uh, Hai Jing and I. Uh, I think when we uh, first met in that dressing room back at the Metropolitan Opera and were conceiving of this uh, this whole plan, I don't think we ever envisioned that 10 years later it would be it would be where we are right now. Stage left. Right, stage left. Okay. We hope that uh, our kids could maybe learn a song in Chinese and and maybe uh, his kids could learn a, a folk song in uh, in English and uh, you know here we are actually doing whole role in Chinese and and uh, fully staged production. It's a little mind-boggling, so uh, to say the least, we're extremely pleased. And the first step on stage was like magical. Audiences in China are great. They clap a ton, they're hooting and hollering and make you feel awesome. They're surrounding you, they're behind you too, so like 360 audience. Um, it was great. Uh, we are so on Saturday for the uh, performance at the Peking National Opera House, so that's pretty cool. So. <laughs> yeah. How's it well, that, that's a big hall, very important hall. The concert hall can hold near 2,000 seats. So now I just got the message and uh, this, this sold all the tickets. That's so exciting. That's a lot of people. Uh, we've got changes for tomorrow's show because we actually have to cut the show. Uh, we've got uh, we've only we got 90 minutes total tomorrow, so we've had to make a lot of adjustments both in the Bernstein because we're trying to get everybody a chance to, to sing, but that causes a lot of problems because we have very few uh, opportunities to rehearse this part, so we're making we lots of changes. Any. Yeah, basically we don't we have any time. We just talk. <laughs> we talk through. So, but. We're, we're courting disaster tomorrow. There's, right. there's no doubt about it. Right, we're so. we're going to be right on the edge. We are in the, uh, well, I'm not sure. It's the concert we're, hall. We're in the concert hall of, of, the, the, of the Performing, Art, Performing Art, Art, Center. Art Center in Beijing, China. Which Pretty is incredible. Actually, a spectacular, it's, it's spectacular really is space. An amazing facility. It's what an opportunity for the kids. I mean, stunning opportunity. I'm freaking out. <laughs> it's like surreal. I kind of cried a little bit, I think, when we came inside. As like mushy as that sounds, but it's real. It's happening. We're rehearsing the cuts that uh, are in for this program because we have a much shorter version of the program today. So we were hoping to have a little bit of time to, uh, to have the singers walk through some stuff, but that doesn't look like that's going to happen. Well, we're trying to get this together very, very quickly. Uh, the students are pretty adaptable, and we talked through it last night, so we just hope everybody remembers where they're supposed to be. My adrenaline was like through the roof. We're in the dressing room, and I tried to get in the zone, but I'm like, I'm in a dressing room in this beautiful, like, this beautiful hall, this beautiful arena, and and was scared to say the least. I'm like freaking out. This is really cool. Skylar, so is everyone going on at the beginning? It really happens like step one, click, step on stage, and then I'm there. I think it was really surreal, and then after it happened, I was like, wait, we just did that, what? <laughs> Actually, as an outcome of, of this particular project, we will, each successive uh, collaboration, we will have a performance here from here on out. So that's an amazing positive. We are in East Lansing, Michigan State, at Fairchild. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Monday, and um, it's the White Cast run-through. 
So we're doing our first dress rehearsal today. Are you excited? Absolutely excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be good. That'll be good. Have black eyeliner so that you can yes, do yes. the little cat eye. <laughs> Use two hands. The left hand will you you with something? They were, treated us so well in China. We were able to kind of pay it pay it forward a little, little bit and show them like a good time here. Dairy store? It's just a really great experience to continue to work together. So it wasn't just like 10 days in China, but we also had like 10 days with them here. So we still got to bond and grow closer. No, actually the most exciting is the singer, the singing double chip. No, you guys can't. Just getting a chance to work with someone new, even with a language barrier or without a language barrier, it is helpful to understand like how different people work on stage. It's really fun to get to know these new people. It's great. It's been kind of a quick, what has it been, four days? They got in, the Chinese students got in Friday night. We rehearsed Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, dress rehearsal Monday night, dress rehearsal Tuesday night. Yeah, I think we're good. said that it's off of a TV show that's like for good luck, like fighting, but I don't know if they actually say fighting or if that's the translation, but we say break a leg and I guess they say fighting, so. <laughs> Ready, Steve? Our director asked, asked to have our hair straight back, and as you can see, my hair is not, Doesn't go that way, not so it? sure about that. Singers on place, singers on place. What he says. It was pretty emotional. Um, I've had, this was my sixth year because I did my undergraduate here, so it was it was definitely like the end of an era for me. It was great because it was such it was the perfect capstone experience to my time here. Last one there, the big number, and uh, for twenty three or twenty four kids all on stage to singing. Uh, so 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 popular and so powerful music. I think we will we'll bring everybody together. The text for the very last part of it is: We're neither pure nor wise nor good. We'll do the best we know. We'll build our house and chop our wood and make our garden grow. And it's the last, it's the finale of Candide, where these very ordinary people go through a series of extraordinary circumstances over the course of the show, and they finally realize, it's sort of like Dorothy saying, if I ever go looking for my heart's desire again, I won't go further than my own backyard. Now we've gone a lot further than our own backyard, but it's still the same idea. We'll just put one foot in front of the other and try to be kind and try to realize that the bigger things, the more material things aren't as important as that, that family unit, that, that world unit. Like one family, uh, like MSU and the China's whole family. And now we want our students to sort of feel that same sort of deep abiding friendship that we were able to find in music uh, and to grow from each other the way that, that we have. Um, I'm always saying this is our we are the world, we are the children moment. The more we can reach out and realize how much we are alike as opposed to how much we are different, that, that I think is the ultimate goal. I think that we all gained a sense of um, uh, encouragement. There were some times where we really had to come together and make sure that our Chinese counterparts knew that we were there for them and we were supporting them. But I think that we also took away from them a sense of perseverance. I hope that they can carry, they know that for the rest of their lives, that we're always here for them and I know they're always going to be there for us. 
just thought it was a life-changing experience and um, I think it's changed me as a person and made me appreciate music in a way that I didn't think was possible. Yeah, hope that they got a lot of love out of us. By the very end, this said uh, peace and friendship and also in Chinese, there's a yu yi and he ping. The finals is all about peace and friendship.